Uh, I'll come back to financial inclusion as well, because I think it's an important uh, policy objective. Uh, it's my judgment that a digital euro is going to happen. So the question is when and what are the design parameters? Maybe you could walk the audience through what you think the timeline looks like. What is the role of the commission? What's going on in Brussels? What has to happen after that? And there are EU elections coming up, so there will be a different commission in place starting the second half of next year. How does that affect that timeline? Okay, so the timeline is as follows. Um, it was really important for me as commissioner to get the proposal out. So that is now being discussed in the European Parliament, mainly in the Economic and Monetary Affairs Committee, but it's also, and I think really importantly, being discussed within the finance minister's grouping, but also in member states. Uh, and Europe really only works when we have a bottom-up, uh, inclusive approach. I've said, and I'll repeat it on this big stage, that we are not rushing this. So we are not saying you must hurry up your discussions and your debate. Rather, we're saying take your time to consider everything. You're right to point out that we will have elections to the European Parliament across Europe in June of next year. Um, so it was nice that this proposal is out, uh, that there is no urgency. It may become a, a topic of conversation in the elections, and if it is, all to the good, because the more tuned in our public are on these developments, the better, in my point of view. And then, the future really will depend on the new commission, the incoming commission, which is usually towards the autumn of, of next year, and then how soon the parliament, the new parliament settles down. So, as you know, that's one track. Separately, the ECB have moved to the preparation stage. Right. Um, and that's another timeline. So we're not talking about next year, for example. I don't want to put a timeline on it because it will go up on X straight away and I don't, don't want to be the, the decider of timelines. I think we'll take due time and due process and strong public debate. But here's something that has interested me as I've watched this because I come to everything with a former journalist mindset, like why are we doing it, who's doing it, what's it about, right. basic questions that really need to be answered. And I've asked all of those of my services uh, as well. Um, and, and what that drives us all to do is question how we deal with money today. And, and one of the things that I, I saw on screen is the evolution of money is extraordinary. Um, and it's about trust. Because if you don't trust the digital form or the cash form, you know, it's, it's over. So trust is fundamental in the financial system. And that's why I'm very keen that we have strong public debate in our member states about a central bank currency and how it will evolve in the future. Um, because we saw in the financial crisis how, how trust was, was very fragmented. So we're talking about a timeline um, over, I would say, years, but I don't know how many. But certainly not next year. Right. Um, but I think that all of the uh, focus in the beginning was very much questioning why. Um, and now we're looking at the when, which is the question that you've asked. And the fact that we're not alone. Um, and one of the arguments I used very early on when colleagues were questioning me about why we're doing this when so many other things might need to be done is because Europe cannot afford to be behind. You very much said in your opening remarks that we, you know, Europe is being looked at as to what we're doing and how we're doing it. And I would like to think that the strong message that I'm trying to deliver is we're doing it very openly inclusively and we want strong public debate. We want people to ask questions about the how and the why, um, so that we get acceptance of this. And one of the issues um, which I see happening, I see it even my own behavior, so I didn't use cash because I couldn't during uh, COVID, but I'm, I'm, I have a little bit of cash now, and I see that in times where there's cost of living difficulties or crisis for some families and communities, cash is a very strong budgeting tool for many families. So I always insist that we talk about choice not one or the other, and that if it goes towards more increased digitalization, it is the choice of people that drives that rather than the system insisting on it. And there is a very big difference. Let's agree that it's going to happen. You're going to be a laboratory for the rest of the world. Therefore, interoperability with other jurisdictions is key. How do you think about that as you're, both, as you're looking at the legal foundations as well as the design parameters? Well, I have to say, we're also looking at the rest of the world and what we do, so we don't kind of blindly do our own thing. And I think that's why I'm here, is also to learn uh, from others as to what happens. Um, so, so, there, so there's some uh, different experiences of uh, launching uh, central bank currencies. And there's no pathway to watch because it's a first. Yeah. Um, and everything that, that you, you launch when it's the first has different outcomes. 
Um, we want to make sure that they're all good outcomes around inclusion, for example, uh, around what technologies are used, around accessibility for those who are find the system um, un inaccessible rather today. Uh, so there'll be lots of discussion around the design features. I think at the bigger level though, and we haven't really addressed that, is the role of central banks, monetary policy, the anchoring of uh, having this public good and trust, which I've mentioned already. So I think all of these components drive not only the conversation, but also how uh, this will, if the ECB decide to roll out, I, I like your prediction that it's going to happen. I'm not saying that, but I think all of the, all of the signals would suggest that central banks globally are also um, looking at this from the perspective of their role um, in monetary policy and their sense that digitalization is the future. Uh, and therefore, we will, um, and I hope people will read the tea leaves, we are doing this in a very open and um, inclusive way, and we want the hard questions to come to us so that we can be very strong